look back upon polio today, you look back upon what was really a summer plague. It came every year. It came like locusts. There was no prevention. There was no cure. There was no protection. I grew up in a family where there was a sense, you know, that my dad was a scientist. He actually would talk about how he used to, as a child, pray that he could do something good for humanity. He was the miracle worker in the white coat on the one hand, but he was also an incredibly hard-working, devoted scientist for whom people were willing to sacrifice. He was challenging medical orthodoxy. All of the people who mattered in virology, John Enders, Albert Sabin, Tom Rivers, and others, basically believed in a live virus vaccine. And here is Jonas Salk, someone who was younger, going in exactly the opposite direction. He was well aware of the early vaccine failures. The first attempt with an inactivated polio vaccine killed kids. It's a testament to his courage and resolve that he could inoculate children with something that he knew started out as live, dangerous polio virus. The stakes couldn't be higher. Vaccines are always a matter of risk versus reward, and nothing is perfect. Nothing is perfect. We didn't have to really be stimulated very much because up on the third floor was the polio ward where they had all the iron lungs. And I remember the faces on some of these kids, you know, in agony. Just picture your own two-year-old. It's just dreadful. The vaccination was 80 to 90 percent effective against paralytic poliomyelitis. The guy gets off the elevator. He never got into the room. It works, it works, they were yelling. There were newspaper reporters that ran to telephones to quickly get this as a front page headline on probably every newspaper in this country. Kids ran out into the street, factory whistles went off, church bells tolled. It was, in a, in a way, as if a war had ended. Jonas Salk became a national hero. You know, he was on the cover of Time. Newsweek called him one of the greatest Americans. President Eisenhower invited him to the White House and actually broke down. This is a, a sign of how great American medicine is at this time. It is an extraordinarily wonderful, optimistic moment, okay? And there is reason to be proud. Jonas Salk is the people's scientist. Whom do we remember? Sigmund Freud, Albert Einstein, Jonas Salk. It's perfect. Jonas Salk is being honored posthumously with the 2014 APHA Executive Director Citation for his exceptional distinguished service to the field of public health. Known as one of society's greatest scientists and humanitarians, Salk perhaps is best known, as you saw, for his role in developing the polio vaccine with his colleagues at the University of Pittsburgh. The vaccine's introduction in 1955 led to a dramatic reduction in the cases of crippling poliomyelitis. Dr. Salt, a former APHA member, <laughs> and a fellow of the American Public Health Association. We used to give those things out, you know. Is an example of the historical quality of our membership. This year marks the 100th anniversary of Salt's birth and is being celebrated with a range of events, including an exhibit entitled Polio, Confronting an Epidemic, at the NYU Lagone Medical Center in New York, uh, a symposium on such topics as global health, healthcare innovation, sustainability, and a film screening of the shot felt around the world. Now here to receive the executive director citation is Jonas Salk's eldest son, Dr. Peter Salk. Peter, an accomplished researcher in his own right, serves as a director and president of the Jonas Salk Foundation. That foundation is dedicated to preserving and extending the scientific contributions of Dr. Jonas Salk. Please welcome Dr. Peter Salk.
Thank you, Dr. Benjamin, and it's an absolute pleasure and an honor to be here. My father would have been so pleased. This was his home. He loved this organization. He published five papers, starting with one on influenza vaccination, and then four major papers on the polio vaccine program in 1954 and 1955. I asked myself, what would my father be thinking now if he were here? this 100 years now after his birth. I think that he would be thinking about healthography in the sense that we're all living on one world and that the nature of our life depends not only on the medical progress, the techniques, the technologies that we develop, but also on the way we relate to each other as people. Just looking now at two examples, medically, in terms of public health in the world, there's a program to eradicate polio virus forever around the globe. It's been in progress very successfully since 1988. But it's still bogged down. And why is that? We have two vaccines that are being used and can be used successfully to end this disease forever but there are still problems in getting the vaccines to the people. And those are based on the political, the religious, and cultural differences that we just haven't yet learned how to handle constructively enough amongst us. And we look also at the recent fears surrounding the Ebola situation. And we have to come to realize that we can't ignore the fundamental health systems in any part of the world because we do so not only to the disadvantage of those people in those other places, those other geographies in the world, but we do so at our own peril. So I look at you. It's an honor to be here and a pleasure and to be in this group of human beings who are devoting your lives to making this world a better place. Keep going. My father would be very encouraged at what he would see if he were here. You'll be making a difference in this world, not only now, but also for future generations. So thank you. <laughs>